Hello adventurers, welcome to the Botanical Gardens of Singapore. This garden has time and again been ranked the world's best. Since its beginning in 1959, today it's a UNESCO heritage site spanning 82 hectares and hosting over 10,000 species of plants. There is no other place you can find this level of concentration of beautiful and rare plants. In this video guide, I'll be showing you the main attractions of the garden, how to get here, and how I'll plan my visit if I were you. You'll have everything you need to know to plan the best visit to the Botanical Gardens. So, let's begin. I'll be ranking the main attractions to give you a gauge on how to prioritize them if you have to choose. I'll start with my favorite, the National Orchid Garden. If you like flowers like me, this is going to be a super treat. Here are the top highlights in the Orchid Garden. The Cool House. The Cool House emulates the climate of a high altitude tropical forest. You'll be treated to a collection of rare plants only found in higher elevations. This is also a great location to escape from the heat. The VIP Orchid Garden Singapore often breed orchid hybrids as gifts to visiting dignitaries. In the VIP Orchid Garden, you'll see those famous hybrids and the famous people they were gifted to. The Mist House The Mist House exhibit a collection of award-winning hybrids. They have beautiful plants on display in such a gorgeous set. The Bromeliad Collection This garden displays all kinds of floras from the South Americas. Every inch of the garden is filled with lovely plants, so I highly recommend walking through the whole garden. Entrance to the Botanical Gardens itself is free of charge, but entry into the Orchid Garden is chargeable. For the amount of gorgeous flowers that I saw, the Orchid Garden is definitely a 5 out of 5. The Evolution Garden this is a huge diorama of the history of life on Earth from the perspective of plants. If you're interested in natural world history, this would be a very fun visit. For the story and the atmosphere, this gets a 4 out of 5. The Ginger Garden This garden hosts many ginger-related plants from all over the world. For the colorful plants and the aesthetic landscape, the Ginger Garden is a 4 out of 5. Next, the Heliconia Walk. This stretch of the garden is full of bizarre looking flowers. This shape being a flower boggles my mind. For its exotic flowers, this gets a 4 out of 5. Next, the Ethnobotany Garden. It's a living plant museum showcasing the significance of plants in human societies. You could say it puts the culture in agriculture. It's a good 4 out of 5. The Palm Valley has a vast grass area in front of Symphony Lake and Symphony Stage. Public events are often hosted here. It's a good event area and maybe for picnicking. So for me, it's a 3 out of 5. The bandstand was originally built in the 1930s for musical performances. For the beautiful architecture and surroundings, it gets a 3.5 out of 5. The Heritage Garden. This garden tells the history about botanical gardens in Singapore. It also displays a big variety of vividly colored plants, especially those with leaves with all kinds of interesting patterns. For the story and the array of plants, it's a 4.5 out of 5. The Sundial Garden This red brick garden has a sundial as its centerpiece, surrounded by square ponds, bushes and statues. It's a very scenic, solid 4.5 out of 5 garden. The Sun Garden This garden displays plants from drier environment. Here, you can find plants you don't usually see in the tropics. For the novel plants and the beautiful statues here, this gets a 4.5 out of 5. The Plant House. Here you'll find sheltered rows of flora in display and a pond in the middle of a grass square. It's quite a pretty place to visit, but not much else is happening, so I'll give it a 3.5. The Frangipani Collection. Here you'll find trees with colourful flowers. With these swings around, this might be a good place for a date or a fun day with the children. So I'll give it 4 out of 5. The Healing Garden. This garden is full of medicinal plants. Do you have an illness to cure or a rival to eliminate? There are fun information about how humans treat illnesses with plants, but it's not as visual, so for me, it's a 3 out of 5. The Trellis Garden. Unless you like creepy plants, there's not much here compared to the other gardens, so I'm giving it a 2.5 out of 5. The Fernery houses a collection of ferns. Personally, I felt that the space was too cramped, and I wasn't sure what to look at, so it's a 2.5 out of 5. The Rainforest Boardwalk takes you on a journey through a tropical rainforest. It was cool to be in the midst of dense tropical rainforest, but the overall experience is slightly lacking, so I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5. The Foliage Garden This garden displays plants with exotic leaves. These leaves really do stand out. 
for leaving me breathless, this gets a 4 out of 5. The Swan Lake. This lush open water area is pleasantly decorated by flowering plants and frequently visited by swans. You can also spot fishes here. The Swan Lake gets a 4 out of 5. The Gallup Extension. This is the newest section of the garden outside of the UNESCO Heritage Area. Within this section, there's the Gallup Valley. Here, a meandering path brings you along a serene garden overlooked by a fine dining restaurant atop the hill. The Adbara and Inver Turret. These are two nice colonial style houses that's now an art and nature exhibit. This is such a welcoming sight, a break from the usual super dense city view. The Adventure Grove, a big nature themed playground, mainly for children. The Arboretum. This is a research garden where they monitor the trees with sensors to discover the optimum growth condition to help conservation efforts. The Rambler's Ridge. This area uniquely emulates harsh tropical slopes and displays the plants that evolved to thrive on it. I found some nice palms and begonias here. Overall, the Gallup Extension offers a great mix of architectural elements in a very beautiful garden. So I'll give it a solid 4 out of 5. Next, the Learning Forest. This is another large section outside of the UNESCO area. The highlights here are the bamboo setum, where you can see different kinds of bamboos, the Walk of Giants, where you get to climb up tall boardwalks near the canopy layer, which gives you a unique vantage point of the forest from above, the Discovery Wetlands, where you can see the vast recreation of a freshwater swamp. Overall, I find the learning forest to be atmospheric and engaging. I really like the signboards that they put up, so I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. There are many entrances into the garden. Depending on where you want to explore, you should enter from the nearest gate. To get here by train, you can come here by Botanic Garden Station and enter via Bukit Timah Gate in the north. Or the Napier Station and enter via Tanglin Gate in the east. And although it's not on the official map, you can also come by the Farrer Road Station and enter via Woolerton Gate in the west. To get here by bus, each of the train stations has a bus stop nearby. If you are driving, there are several parking lots within the garden itself. For the specifics on how to get here, Google Maps usually works splendid, so I'll focus on sharing with you the best way to visit the garden. By the way, if you are enjoying this guide, I'll be very grateful if you could leave a like to let me know I did a good job. This guide took a lot of time and effort to produce, so thank you for your support. I've done the research and tested this route. This will bring you to the best of botanical gardens. However, let's not be stressing for directions while you're there. To make navigating super easy, I'll just be sharing the main destinations and point out the top attractions nearby. You just have to follow the brown signboards for the general directions. Okay, here's the route. First, take the public transport and start from Tanglin Gate. Once inside, prioritize taking the narrower roads while following the signboards towards the National Orchid Garden. This should lead you to a cluster of great attractions like the Swan Lake, the Heritage Garden, Sandal Garden, Bandstand, Sun Garden, and the Ginger Garden. After enjoying all those parks, it will be good to take a rest at the Orchid Plaza before making your way into the National Orchid Garden. I highly recommend visiting the Cool House, the Mist House, and the Bromeliad Collection in the National Orchid Garden. When you exit, take a left towards the Palm Valley, then walk along the right side to catch the Heliconia Walk. From here on, follow the sign towards Botanic Gardens MRT, which will lead you to the Bukit Timah Gate. Depending on your energy level, there are some more attractions along the way that are worth visiting such as the Evolution Garden, Ethnobotany Garden, and the Foliage Garden. After all that, exit from Bukit Dima Gate, where you can take the train or the bus. Here's some bonus tips to make your visit even better. First, visit in the earlier or the later part of the day. This is so that you can avoid the super hot afternoon sun. And bring a water bottle for drinking. You will sweat a lot here, so it's essential to stay hydrated. Tap water is drinkable in Singapore, so you can refill your bottle for free at toilets or at these water dispensers and bring some snacks to eat. The food in the cafes here can easily set you back $20 per person. So take some snacks that you can survive on until you can eat somewhere else more affordable. And last but most importantly, take your time. It's a big garden with a lot to see. Take it slow while keeping your eyes open because there are more than just plants in this botanical garden. If you're lucky and observant, you might meet the resident wildlife. So if you're in Singapore, whether as a tourist or as a resident, the Botanical Gardens is definitely a top tier destination that you should consider. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I wish you a fruitful visit to the garden. 
If you're curious about nature in Singapore, check out my other videos next.